This is how to practice Suzuki Book 2, page 17. So at the top of the page it says place your first finger on both the A and D strings. So I like to call that a bridge. You're li literally going to have your first finger on both strings and you may need to kind of wiggle back and forth but that's how you're going to go from the A string up to the D string, A string, D string, since you go back and forth with it in this piece. So I've got my finger braced on both fingers, both strings, and it's going to go like this. So watch, my finger's not moving much. It's just kind of wiggling between the two different strings. So that's how you practice that. And in tempo, it's a little bit faster than that. Okay, now the next one says play these trills respectively as follows. So here's what it should sound like. And right below that, it shows you how to play it if, in kind of a simplified way. You'll see these six sixteenth uh, notes that sound like this. So the way that I like to practice this is I'm going to start on the second measure, the E, e just like this. So I've got my fourth finger and my one, just like this. Let's see where you can see it. There we go. So I've got them both down. And it's a down bow. And the first note is more important, so play it a little bit louder, and then lighten up on the lower E. Okay, then, once I've practiced that a whole bunch of times, I'll learn the first measure, the six, uh, sixteenth notes. Just like that. Let's play it. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. A little faster. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Little faster. Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. And each time I'm using less bow. So uh, when it gets faster, I'm, I'm using less and less bow. So once you've got that measure and the second measure really, really well done separately, then I like to just play the last note of the first measure and the first note of the next measure. So it's going to be an F sharp, a bow, and then a fourth finger E. So like this. Or... Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. Now if you're having a really hard time with that fourth finger, what I would recommend doing is instead of having your fourth finger way back here or somewhere else, I would have it hovering and ready to play that fourth finger. I'd have it really close, maybe even touching the A string fourth finger spot so that you're all ready. All right, once you've got those two notes really well done, your first finger is going to have to hop over the A string to the D string. So it'll be like this. Let's do that. Ready? Go. 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 Okay, if that's getting really hard, just stop the video, go back to that spot, and you can just practice that little loop as much as you possibly want. Now, I like to do this thing called backwards chaining, which is where you add one note to the beginning of the phrase and then you go on. So I'm just going to add now the last two notes of the first measure 
into the second measure. So it'll be like this. See how we did that? E, F sharp, E, E. Let's try that. Ready, go. 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 Okay, now let's add one more. Now we're going to be doing F sharp, E, F sharp, E, E. Like this. Ready, go. 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 One little hint. If it's not sounding great and it's not a finger thing, it's most likely your string crossings. So pay a lot of attention to exactly what string you're on over here in terms of your bow. So I, I would have your eyes trained to right here, to this spot where your bow is touching the string. That should help. Just keep it right in that sweet spot over the two holes on the top of your F hole. That one right there, that hole right there is your sweet spot. If you play directly over that spot, you get the best sound. If you play way up here, it's going to be kind of weaker. And if you play really close to the bridge, watch out. It's going to be right in your face kind of sounding. So just keep yourself right over the sweet spot for most of these pieces in the Suzuki book. Okay, now let's add one more note. So we're going to be going G sharp, F sharp, E, F sharp, E, E. Okay, sound like this. Oops, sorry, that's not what I meant. I'm only adding one note at a time. Let's try it. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Keep your eyes trained right here. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Okay. Now we're just going to add one note. We're going to add the first F sharp. So it's going to be E, uh, F sharp, G sharp, F sharp, E, F sharp, E, E. It'll be like this. F sharp is your first note. Let's try it. Ready, go. 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 Okay, now we get to play the whole thing. So it's the whole two measures, starting on G sharp. Ready, set, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. Cool, so that's a basic trill with just two G sharps um, before the open E string. Um, if you are ready for a little bit more of a challenge, you can do an actual trill, so it'll sound like this. And that's how it's written right above the one we were just working on. The next measure over is the exact same thing, but on the A string. Okay, and then the actual trill is like that. Okay, then the bottom line, uh, the, the fourth line down actually, 
is um, the top fingering practice with particular attention to the placement of the third finger is what it says underneath of it. So you're going to be going from high A on the E string, just regular third finger, um, three, one, four, and then your four is going to be right next door to your third finger, which is going to be high, a high three, which is D sharp, high three on the A string. Okay, so note by note, no bowings or rhythms or anything, the notes go like this. A, F sharp, E, D sharp, A, F sharp, E, D sharp, A, F sharp. Okay, so we're going to start up bow. Maybe a good thing to mark. In fact, I'm going to mark it too. Up bow on that high A with a third finger marked on it. So I'm going to play it really slow and you can play it along with me. By the way, I'm just going to kind of do a repeat for about four or five times. Ready? Go. three aren't quite in tune, bring your violin up, your elbow under. That should help. Let's try it again. Ready? Go. So you'll notice you're hopping from regular three to high three. The regular three you should really be playing on the tip of your finger and with a high three you can kind of reach up and play a little bit farther back on the tip of the finger. So high three do, 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 more like right there. So, I hope that helps. Let me go ahead and play for you the scale and arpeggios at the bottom of the page. This is A major. Exercise 19. arpeggios with me, but if you want kind of an interesting little something different for your practice, um, with the scale, with the A, A major scale, example 18, you could start your scale two beats, two notes, after I play, and it'll be really nice. So when I'm playing C sharp, you're playing A, okay? So I would start like this in the video, A, B, when I play C sharp, you're going to start on A, A, B, and start going up. It'll sound really nice. It's in third, so it's going to sound very harmonious. And then with example 19, if you wanted to play like a, what we call a canon with me, you could start right there at example 19 and either play one or two notes after me, and it'll sound really great. So I hope you enjoy this video, and give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Bye.